All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's ramming day, but first, it is shop organization because it is something that I very deeply struggle with and the two people who we have hired, it is their forte and it drives them crazy the way that I work. So we are organizing the shop just a little bit for their sanity and then we're going to get some ramming done. We're gonna do those two windows, uh, it shouldn't take long and we'll let those sit and then probably get back to more shop organization or possibly milling lumber today for uh, various projects that we have coming up. So it's gonna be kind of a mishmash, all kinds of stuff day, several projects. So there we go. We can start taking slabs over. We can just stack them on the forks Yeah. Cool. and I'll just bring the slabs over. Those, yeah, that'll work. It's, maybe it's for the mixture. Mm -hmm. All of your B stuff. Cool. That was in the bucket. And then it's the hive slot slot things that were in there yeah. are in here. Okay. Cool. I gotta make a uh, hook for that inside. We should hang that inside. Okay. We're getting there. Well, we'll find some wood to uh, make a shelf of some sort. Oh, can you grab the brush? What are you laughing at, Which Luke? Brush? Uh, the horsehair hair brush to brush yeah, all this. Said, if only we could find some wood somewhere to make some shelves. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could find some wood somewhere to make some shelves. Yeah. Yeah, do you want me to start getting materials for ramming? Uh. Oh, we need to pour the color. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to do that. So we need to transfer the color from the bags into the buckets. So we figured out very early on that the color goes everywhere and stains everything. Yep. Anything it touches. So I was digging into the bag with our little scoop buckets and that was making a huge mess and I literally would have color from here all the way down every time. Then we got smart because one of the bags ripped. Well, really it was because one of the bags ripped. Put it in a five gallon bucket and that means that the opening stays open and I don't get color all the way up my sleeve. It still goes everywhere, but it's a little bit more bearable. But we just bought new color, which means I need to transfer it into five gallon buckets. All right, a lot of people have asked. Our color comes from Lambert Southwest. It's cement color, um, also sometimes called mortar color. And we are using uh, rustic copper and adobe tan are our colors. We use anywhere from zero to about four percent based on the weight of the cement that we add to our mixture. And we have, I think they're 94 pound bags, 96 pound bags, something like that. So it's about one pound of color is equal to roughly one percent um, according to weight. So we just go ahead and call one pound, 1% 1 for our purposes, because it does not need to be exact. All right, that wasn't too bad. Hopefully I'm not speaking too soon. Yeah, it does not wash off very well. Not too shabby. I think we're good. Hey, love. What uh, what happened? So I spoke too soon that it went smoothly. I went to put the bag back in the shop and tripped over the edge of the pallet, knocked into the bag, and got a cloud of yeah, color. It's not. It, it, it just already, looks like you have a really nice tan. I've already cleaned myself up and it is... Yeah. Do, do I look uneven? Yeah, you do. Yeah. So this side is, that's her normal color. And this side, you just look tan. I got a really nice tan like that. Like a, like a copper bronzing Yes, tan. I did get a copper bronzing. Color and add mix, ready to go. Ricky is wetting our rock. A pre-wetting. TJ's got the pedibone out with the mixer. All right, let's do it to it. Load up our first set. Load up. I'm gonna fire up the air compressor.
go up against the foam so that you, because this stuff will just tear through the foam. The key is you kind of go as parallel to the foam as possible, if not slightly on the foam side like this. So that's an exaggerated version. You'll tear up a lot of foam. Like it, just learning the process, don't stress about it. It doesn't change the thermal dynamics that much, but as you get better at it, that's that's what I found works. Because if you try to like come in from the side like this, you're gonna end up hitting the foam and you just chunk it out. And it happens so fast. Because <laughs> you'll as soon as you noticed it, you've already hit it four times. The foam is off by like an inch. Dang it. Yeah, it's not moving. It's not moving. Another thing we can do. So this needs rebar, and I think what we'll do is we'll just, um, once I pour the concrete, we'll actually wedge a, like a piece of wood in there as a spacer, so we'll flatten out the concrete, wedge the spacer in, and that'll force the foam, the top of the foam this way, and then once it all dries, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll be okay. I just wasn't paying attention. My bad. Is where it is. All right, this, this is nice because the two by four because it drops in like that. So, yeah, so we just put a little two by four here that eight inches that's going to force the foam that way so we can dump in rammed earth right there. And that's that. So, we're going to do a lift and then rebar. Are we good for rebar now? Uh, we're going to do a lift here and rebar. We need rebar over there. So lift, then rebar, over there, or just rebar? Over there, just rebar. TJ's mixing up the stuff right now to put the rebar in, I think. Okay. So we should be good. So let's do one more lift here. I'll ram it, we'll do rebar, then we'll do uh, concrete. Okay. Let's do it to it. Just so you know, I found that one good squeeze is about one... One of these? One of those. Perfect. I did so, two squeezes, so I should get two in, right? Yep. All right. The wind's blowing now, so that's perfect. That's... We nice. get all this epoxy all over the concrete. You know, just what we want, right? Just what we want. just another splash. Actually, once we put the steel in, I think we need a little. There, right there. All right, cool. It needs to be like this. You know what we forgot to do? It's okay. What? I was going to uh, put pieces of wood in the steel so it can't sink too far down. Oh, so it would float? Huh? So it would float? So it would float, yeah, I was gonna put a piece of wood here so it would sit on the foam. Oh. And be at the correct time. We still can. We just gotta be a little bit more careful. Now, if we smooth it out and then uh, cut, a, cut a piece of wood at 
Eight inches minus an inch and a half, so six and a half. So if you cut that, uh, give me two of those at six and a half. Actually, four. Give me two seven inchers, and then the screws and the bit. The wood to the gray ones? The gray ones, yeah. Wood to metal, yeah. I have an idea. Will it work? All right, I think we're good. Yeah, fill these. Actually, you know what? Stay there. Looks like that little jig worked out quite nicely. I think the way we did it on that one's better, where I, we hung it, essentially. It's gonna be our kitchen floor. Yeah, don't want concrete cookies on our kitchen floor. Now it's getting thick enough that we can make this look. The angle on that outside of the wall, we want it to drain any water off, so. Trying to get an angle there. But your jig seemed to work pretty well, holding those up. Yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. I think we're going to break for lunch, then we might thin out some of the forest over there. So Ricky fixed our door and added a latch on the outside that will turn the lock on the inside so that we can keep it locked when we're not here. The boys are working on the air conditioning on the Bobcat. Ricky's going to go trowel our concrete cap. Just checking little projects off the Which list. The bottom fan works, I think. All right. Hey. When? TJ hung our weed whacker up there. Yeah. So yeah, shelves or table or something yeah. right there. That's it. Is he working? That's what's up. Yeah, they're the wood. Uh, so I need your thoughts on thinning these. Obviously the dead one's coming down. Really? Should we take this one? It's leaning into the road. I think we should take this one down, even though it's like right kind of at a corner. They seem to all be leaning. This one seems good though. I think most of them are leaning because they need sun. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, the oak tree's choking them out. That one needs to go, this one needs to go, that one needs to go. Oh, we could leave this one. Yeah, let's leave that one. And take the rest of these? Yeah. And get to be able to get to that so we can take that one, but leave the big one there. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Do you want me to get something to mark which ones we're leaving? Sure. Okay. Um, so it'll be five and a half by 
20 inches deep by three feet wide. Perfect. So that's roughly where our refrigerator is and gives us a little bit of space to the um, air conditioning unit. And then I'm thinking we could fit four shelves on there in which we've got several other pieces of real nice board that we can just shave into or rip down into yeah. like half inch strips to use as slats going all the way down. Perfect. So we just pulled the uh, hub assembly off of the red tractor and the bearing, well first we found a ball bearing that had literally been split clean in half. Then we pulled the gears off and that is what's left of the bearing. This is actually the bearing race that is split oh. right down the middle. It's normally t about twice that thickness and it holds all the bearings. So I'd say the bearing went bad. That's my professional opinion. And by went bad, you mean uh, I mean literally destroyed. detonated. So we're gonna pull all these chunks out. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's just, it literally, ex it exploded. More bits coming out. There's more chunks falling out. <laughs> That's what the inside of a bearing looks like, kids. Is this all bearing material? <laughs> Yummy. It's just chunks of bearings and race. And... Yeah, there's more in here. Oh, there's a bunch of bearings that are split in half right there. Oh, yeah? Oh, and there's another piece of the race. <laughs> My goodness. When you break them, you break them good. Got the two sides done. 36 inches wide. Zero. I think I'm going to do, what is it, 20, so, 26 uh, plus the two. So it'll be like 30 inches wide instead. That way I don't have to use two different kinds of wood for the front. So it doesn't, so it doesn't look too janky. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad yeah. you're, uh, you're concerned. How I am concerned you. about appearances for you guys. I want, I want this to look really, really good. Top notch. Top notch. So yeah, all of our cutting devices are not square, so... That's fine. So it will hold chips and... It will hold chips, I guarantee that. And, uh... AJ did a thing! I did a thing! With power tools! Wait, wait, wait! What? <laughs> With power tools! Alright, so... We ripped apart a tractor. We... Cut down some trees, we did some other stuff. And... We're gonna call it a day. Thanks for joining our adventure.